Thanks, Vikas. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome from Abdome to our session titled The Ultimate CISO Guide to Making Mobile App Security Agile, Fast and Easy. My name is Shirochit Dasgupta, and I head the go-to-market sales organization for South Asia based out of Delhi. And joining me today from Singapore is Jan Sismans, who's an industry veteran and is our mobile app security evangelist. I wanted to take this opportunity to thank Elite CISO organization for giving us this platform to present before the best cybersecurity leaders in, the, in this industry. I hope we have a very engaging session and in the interest of time, would we'll pass on to Yan to take us through the presentation and demo content we have for you today. Yan, over to you. Well, thank you very much, Sirojit. And again, thank you, Vikas and the Elite CISO team for giving us this opportunity. Um, before I go into the topic of today, uh, very quickly, what is Abdome? Abdome is a no-code mobile cyber defense automation platform. Um, we secure mobile apps of um, big brands around the world. Um, we are headquartered in Silicon Valley. Uh, we've been around since 2016. Abdome has many patents around um, the process of building um, and securing apps. And as Vikas and George had said, uh, our um, Asia headquarters here are in Singapore. That's where I'm from. Hello. Um, and Sirojit um, runs our South Asia operations out of Delhi. So um, that's kind of how we can help uh, uh, protect and support you. Um, interesting tidbit about AppDome. We protect today about 1 billion mobile apps around the world. Um, and um, our threat intelligence uh, platform protects apps from about 46 million attacks on average monthly month. Average month, we uh, stopped about 46 million attacks launched against the apps of our customers. So just to give you some ideas what it is, we are a no-code platform, so we save a uh, developer time there again, over our duration of, of, of everything. We've saved developers about 38 million coding hours. But that's it about Abdome. Um, what I wanna talk about, and, and Vikas, thank you, you've, uh, You've kind of pointed to that already, okay? Um, we are in a mobile revolution in India, okay? Um, I'm based out of uh, Singapore, but uh, I've been to India before, um, I'm talking with Sirojit as well. Today, Indians live and, uh, and work with their mobile devices. Without mobile devices, um, the Indian society wouldn't function. And today about, according to Statistica, two thirds of Indians today have a smartphone. But I think what's much more interesting is from a usage standpoint, okay, 5% of mobile apps globally around the world are downloaded in India, 5%, okay? Um, today in India, revenue generated off of mobile apps is about $2.7 billion US. And in the next five years, it's supposed to grow to $4.8 billion. That is revenue attributed to mobile apps generated from mobile apps. And Indians on average spend close to five hours a day in mobile apps. So mobile apps are really, really front and center um, Indians. Um, but the question that we get asked all the time, and I think this is really, really interesting. Um, as it turns out, uh, customers ask us, oh, hey, how long does it take before an app gets, um, gets attacked? attacked? And as it turns out, um, based on the research our security research team has done, it can take um, minutes to hours before an app gets attacked when it's launched onto the public app store. And the reason for that is fairly straightforward, no? It's all a numbers game. So everybody on their mobile device, and my mobile device here, everybody on their mobile device already has, based on the research our research uh, security research team did, already has malware installed. Most every device, today is already infected with some kind of malware. So it's the numbers game. So if you have under a million downloads, it takes several hours uh, to maybe a day or so before your app gets attacked once a new version of your app is launched on, on the public app store. But that number goes down as you have more apps installed. And so um, as it turns out, what we found out, and this I think is one of the most interesting stats here, if you have over 10 million downloads, which most big consumer brands in India have over 10 million downloads, okay? It takes seconds um, as you launch your app on the public app store for your app to be attacked. And why is that? It's because of the 
uh, malware that's already present on people's devices that now may, may be looking for your specific app or maybe looking for a new app that goes up on the mobile device and then that malware goes and tries to attack the app okay so this i think is is a very sobering thought it takes minutes to, to hours once you have launched an app on the app store for the app to get attacked and mobile app security is a problem okay this is just a snapshot of reported incidents here in, uh, in in Asia over the last 12 months. And, and you can do your search on on, on, um, on Google yourself, look for mobile app breaches, and you'll find a whole set of apps, of breaches. The why is mobile app security so difficult? And there's three components to that. And the first component is that mobile app security is complex. Well, mobile apps themselves are complex. Android is very different from iOS. Um, and developers have very, very big freedoms in how they want to design their apps, how they want to develop their apps. They can do it in a native framework, um, in hybrid or a non-native framework to build their mobile apps in. As a result, how you then implement security in that app can differ from how from Android to iOS and from how that app was developed. Okay, so especially if you look at uh, SDK based security solutions, um, there are dependencies on how the app was built and what, what you're doing with the app. But the other element why it is so complex is that the operating systems con constantly evolve. Uh, Apple and Google release new operating systems all the time. And then the last one is the ever changing security landscape. Okay. The bad guys are using automation to attack apps. I just talked about that earlier. And so if you don't have a way to very quickly react to um, new threats in the market, um, you're always behind um, and, and you're always trying to catch up. Okay, so mobile security, building that is complex, number one. Number two, and I'll talk about that a little bit in a second as well, is the tension between dev and sec. And when we were talking with Vikas in the beginning, and Sirojit remembered, we had a great conversation with Vikas, um, and we were talking about that tension, and that is something that really resonated with Vikas and therefore must resonate with you as well. What we hear, and again, I'll talk about it in a second, is that uh, there's a distrust between the cyber team and the developers, and we'll talk about the reason for that in a moment. And then the last element around the complexity is all the different regulatory frameworks that exist as well. So first of all, okay, so why are I talked about security-based SDKs. Why are security-based SDKs difficult? Well, first of all, um, every time you have a new release and you have new features, you've got to possibly re rebuild the SDK, or when the operating system uh, changes, you may have to rebuild the SDK. If you, if you make, make a decision, you want to go from building your, your app in Java to, uh, to Flutter, your security SDKs may no longer work. But the decision to move Development frameworks is a decision that developers make because they want to build great apps. Developers are focused on building great apps and they want to use the best framework to do that. So from a cyber standpoint, that creates its own problem and we'll talk about it again in a little bit more. But the second part, and I think is, um, is, 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 is an element that is unique to SDKs. Every SDK, regardless of what kind of an SDK it is, if you build an SDK into an app, it requires controls. Okay? Those controls have to be declared, otherwise the developer doesn't know how to build those SDKs. Well, a security SDK, therefore, the security controls for an SDK have to be in the app, in the clear. Now, any good hacker will look for those, that information around the security SDK that's in the clear, most of those actually have the name of the vendor. So it's fairly simple and straightforward to find. And that provides a hacker roadmap to be able to attack the app. You know when the SDK begins, where it ends. So if you want to insert any malware or any other um, code into the app to be able to uh, penetrate and exploit the app, you just do that before or after the process, whatever that is. But it provides a hacker a roadmap on how to disable or turn off or bypass the protections in the app. Okay, so that's the biggest problem around using um, security SDKs. Um, the tension between cyber and dev, I found very, very um, 
I, I, I every time we talk with 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 CISOs, I find it very um, uh, eye opening to hear that. Okay, so Abdom does um, these uh, CISO roundtables. We do them all around the world. The last one we did was in the Philippines, and we look forward to meeting you uh, in India later this year as, as well. I hope. But when we ask our CISOs, well, what, how is your relationship with Dev? The most to me, the most eye-opening thing that they tell us is that there's a level of distrust. And why is that CISOs today don't have proof of uh, protections. They don't have any visibility uh, management or control into the security releases in the app. They depend on external tools like pen tests in order to validate that the protections are in the app. And sometimes even they've told us we don't trust the pen tests. Okay. Um, the cyber team does not have any feedback loops how effective the protections are indeed in production. Okay. So there is in general a lack of trust between the cyber and the dev teams. And as a result, as it turns out, as a result, the dev team basically ignores what the cyber team wants. Okay. Um, when they'll go back and they say, you know what, cyber. You're not that important. My job is to build great apps with a great user experience for our customers. All you're doing is you're delaying my release, you're blocking my release, you're an obstacle to being able to release. And so if you really need these protections, we'll get to it later. Okay? Or um, we've got other things to do, or we'll put it on the roadmap. And those are some of the things that the cyber team deals with on a regular basis. And it makes the job of the CISO really, really hard. And the last thing is around the regulatory framework. Okay, I'm going to go over this fairly quickly. Um, again, um, Sarojit was telling me that in India there's a lack of, disclo uh, of, of disclosure law, so we don't really know how many um, um, incidents there truly are. And then we also know that Indian app makers build apps for a global audience, so you need to. Uh, comply with a whole set of regu regulations all around the world. Uh, HIPAA, if it is health related, um, PCI compliance, if you have payment in your app, GDPR, if you have any European uh, customers, and in India itself, you have the RBI, the Reserve Bank of India, they have their own set of regulations, specifically to the RBI regulations, they're called the uh, digital payment security controls, and every financial services, every FinTech app needs to comply with those. Again, there's nine different categories within those uh, DPSC uh, regulations, and um, we have a gift for you. So after this event, Sarojit will follow up with you and will actually send you a worksheet that you can use to um, that goes into great detail on what all those nine different categories are. There's about 65 different requirements in there and how you can, what you need to do in order to comply with those. So that is our gift to you for uh, joining today's event. Um, and last but not least, and I think this is overseen a lot, is internal compliance, okay? So what you need is you need an audit trail. You need a mobile app security solution that can be your um, security, uh, your, um, your, um, your system of record, your security system of record that you can go back to at any point in the history, have the audit trail to be able to go back and say, oh yeah, six weeks, six months ago, this was a security model we're building in the app and you can provide that with your internal auditors or you can provide that to demonstrate compliance to any of the regulatory bodies we were talking about. So that is the other thing that you need in order to be able to build, make it easy for you and build mobile app security in a fast, agile and rapid way. So that gets us to the question. How do you make mobile app security agile, fast, and easy? And so what I'm gonna go over in the next couple of slides is um, the framework in how you can do that. And then uh, with your permission, I will give you a quick demo on how you can actually achieve that outcome on the Abaddon platform. But really what I wanna focus in, on is setting a framework, whether you use Abaddon, whether you use another solution, but what is the right framework that you should follow in order to make mobile app security agile, fast, and easy. Because your developers are living in an agile world. world okay? So one of the other tensions, as it turns out, between developers and cyber 
is that developers want quick releases. And so developers will come back and they will tell cyber, if you cannot work within my workflows, within my, we've invested heavily in DevOps automation. If you cannot work within my existing DevOps workflows, I'm not going to build any security because it will break my workflow. Okay, so agile, very important term, fast and easy, really make it easy for everybody to get to. So what you need is a no code cyber defense automation platform. And no code is because you don't want any delays. You don't want to have to depend on an SDK or anything else where a developer has to do any coding. Developer has to do any coding. All it means is it's just going to delay their process and they're going to go and wave off and they say, no, you know what? I don't have time for this because I have two weeks to do to, to get my release out of the door because the sales team is waiting for new features or the marketing team is, is doing a launch or whatever reason it is, but that takes precedent. And so I don't have time to build your protections. A cyber defense is more than just mobile op security. It's more than just RASP protection. You need to be able to protect against malware. You need to be able to protect against fraud. You need to be able to protect against cheat. So what you need is a cyber defense platform that um, helps you meet your requirements of today, but it also provides you with um, the ability to easily version your security model and meet the requirements of tomorrow. Because as I said earlier, the threat landscape is ever changing. Okay, so it's really important to have the flexibility and, and not lock you into a tool that is just good for today, but have the flexibility to be able to version your, uh, uh, your security model to meet the, cha the changing requirements of tomorrow. And then the last part is the automation side. Okay, as we said earlier, developers come back and they will tell you, you know what, if you don't fit within my existing automation processes, I'm not going to be able to help you. So it's really, really important to be able to have a system that can connect into your existing DevOps workflows, that can connect to your CI CD tools. Okay, so if you go talk to your developers, they will come back and they say, does it work with Jenkins? Does it connect to, to GitLab, to GitHub? Does, um, we are using Circle CI. Does it work with Circle CI? Oh, we just changed from Circle CI to Azure DevOps. Does it work with Azure DevOps? Oh, wait, Bitrise, the perfect CI CD tool for mobile apps. We, we're just invested heavily in that. Does it work with Bitrise? Okay, that is what the developers want to hear. They don't want to hear, here's another security tool. They don't want to hear, oh, this is our security requirement. They want to hear from you, from the cyber team, Hey, we have a security solution that meets all of our requirements in cyber and that you can easily implement with a simple API call inside of your existing DevOps workflow. And yes, it works with whatever CI CD tool that you have in place today. Okay, that is what your uh, dev team wants to hear. If you bring that those words, if you use those words with your dev team, they will be open to listen to you and they will become your biggest uh, partners in trying to protect your apps and protecting your end user. Okay. But the last thing, the last thing is you need a feedback loop. You need a feedback loop that A, at the release meeting, documents that yes, all the security requirements that we need are in the app. Okay. So you don't have to do a pen test. You don't have to delay any release. You can immediately certify the release ready for production. But you also need a feedback loop from what is actually happening in production. You need to be able to have proof that the protections that you are using in your app, that those protections are indeed effective, that they work to protecting your app and your customers. But on top of that, you also need to have intelligence on new threats that may be used against your app. Okay? And that's what I said earlier in the beginning. The threat landscape is ever changing. So it's really, really important for you to be able to know what new threats are out there, know what new tools the hackers, the bad guys are using to attack your apps so that you can then build the right protections, react quickly and build new protections into your security model, version your security model. Listen to what I just said, and okay, this is also very important. When you talk with, with the developers, and this is what we hear from our CISOs, 
Okay, when they say, you know what, my relationship with my developers has gotten so much better, as it turns out, I am using the words that they use. I am telling them that I want to use developer best practices to building security in my app. Okay, and how you do that by versioning your security model by integrating into their uh, automation tools. Okay, so this is a key thing from what, what, what I'm told by our CISOs. They say uh, that one of the most important things that they can tell their developers is that they are ready to use developer best practices to building security in their mobile app. Okay, and how do you do that? You do that by using a uh, no code mobile cyber defense automation tool. Okay. So one more slide that I think is super important. Okay. One more slide that our customers tell us really helps them make the point with their developers. Okay. What you see here is the automation workflow that the developers have built out. They go, they, they commit a build into their CICD tool, they trigger the build, the build is done, and then they get notified by the build outcome, all automated inside of their uh, CICD work, uh, their DevOps workflow in their, inside of their CICD tool. Okay, with AppDome, because AppDome connects to your CICD tool, building protections is just the next step. It is the next API call that is being made. So protections are being added to the app. And again, then the AppDome solution, the AppDome tool will provide you with a notification that the protections are indeed in the app. And we'll talk about that in a second when I show you the demo. And then from there, again, all fully automated inside of your, 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 uh, your, your workflows, um, the secure app goes to the ops team, they use Fastlane to then deploy it into um, to the public app stores. And from there, AppDome's mobile XDR solution or any other business tool that you may find, should be able to provide you with a feedback loop, A, how effective the, uh, the protections are in production, and B, if there are any new threats out there. Because if there are new threats out there and you have now proof, you can make a data-driven decision on versioning your security model. As a cyber team, you can now version your security model in time for when the developers release the next build. Because it's all, inside their automation workflows. So it's a win-win for both cyber and for dev teams. You now cyber, you get full visibility management and control over the security releases in your app, and the dev team doesn't have to make any changes on how they build their apps today. Okay? As it turns out, this slide is the most important slide that you as a cyber team can provide to the dev team to explain what you want to achieve. So, I thought many times this is an easy process, okay? No SDK required. You start with the compiled app, you then build the protections into the app, and then the system should provide you with a secure app in the exact same format as the, uh, the original app is. So if it's an, an, an AAB file, an Android AAB file, it's built in Flutter, the outcome of uh, your build should be an Android AAB file in the Flutter uh, format without any changes to, to, the, to the code of the app, no source code, no need for source code access or anything else, an app that can be easily provided uh, and uploaded to Google Play and then from there be uh, distributed to your customers. Okay, so with that, um, we'd like to invite you for a quick demo. Uh, Siroja, do you have any comments before we start with the demo? No, yeah, I think we are all good out here. I didn't get any questions also on the panel, so I think we are all good to go. Okay. So yeah, if yeah, you have I any questions, have, yes, I please. just have one comment. I think demo will run fine if you accept our stand and attend challenge that we discussed before we started the session. So if you accept the stand ah. and attend challenge, press that button on your uh, yeah standing table. Awesome. Great. Now there the demo bot will be very happy with you. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. I think because um, that got dropped when you got dropped out of the call earlier. So, right, um, right. But thank you for reminding me. So here I am. Thank you for allowing me to stand. It's so much healthier anyways. Um, but yes, so um, let me quickly uh, 
give you a um, an idea. Let me allow me to visualize to you how whatever I said earlier would work. Okay, so you would start with a, uh, a compiled app. And that compiled app can be any app um, as long as it is, is in a official format, so APK or AAB of Android and IPA from for iOS with or without bitcode. Okay. And then that app, in case of AppDome, here sits in your workplace. And so as you can see here, uh, I have a set of apps from customers and prospects. Um, and so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, this app, which is Union Digital app. Um, the process of taking a free demo of this product would help. Um, so uh, Ambarish, uh, Sirochit will follow up with you and then uh, we can get, um, you, you can understand how we can do that for your organization. So but thank you. Um, so the Union Digital app that I'm using, uh, Union Digital is one of our customers out of the Philippines. I said earlier, Serge is going to follow up with you after this event with the, the worksheet. He's also going to include um, the uh, case study that we have with Union Digital Bank. Okay. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to start with the creation of a security model. And I'm going to call this Elite uh, CISO. And that's the security model that I'm going to be using. Okay, so I am now creating a security model. And um, what we want to do is we want to, this is a banking app, so I want to comply with the, um, uh, the RBI uh, requirements. And so for that, I need to add encryption to the app. I need to encrypt the, uh, all of the data stored in the app. And this is an Android app, so the values of XML and Java class text files. Um, need to protect the app from running on a jailbroken or a rooted device. The rooted is an Android app. Uh, you need to protect the connection between the app and the back end, so pre prevent any man in the middle attacks or network based attacks. Um, you need to obfuscate the code of the app. Um, this is to protect the app against reverse engineering. In this case, again, this is an app written in Flutter, so it's a non native framework. So we're going to enable both non native code obfuscation as well as uh, binary code obfuscation. And then um, AppDome will always add RASP protections to the app, anti debugging, anti tampering, anti reversing. And the last thing that I want to add is I want to add uh, fraud protection uh, to the app as well. Okay, so the, the R RBI talks about uh, protecting the app against mobile fraud and, and the sort of popular ways of um, doing fraud on banking apps is using overlay attacks or using key loggers. Um, and another thing that the RBI talks about is preventing uh, dynamic instrumentation. So in this case, I'm going to block Frida. So I've created a fairly complex security model. All I have to do now here on the bottom right is click build my app. Okay. Again, this is AppDome, how AppDome works. Um, but that that is why we're saying it should be a rapid fast and easy, and, and easy process. So what the system now does, okay, um, the system is basically um, building the protections at the binary level of the app. This is in the app dome case. So it's adding an additional library to the app. There's no need for source code access. There's no need to decompile the app. The system is building the, the required protections to the app. So that is how um, AppDome works. Other solutions, of course, may work in a different way. But again, focusing on um, making it easy for you to build the right security model for your business. As you saw earlier, there are many different options on AppDome. By the way, um, you need to ensure that that right security model works the same for Android as for iOS. So as you can see here on iOS, this is the Union Digital iOS app. It is the same way. It is a simple toggling of a switch. In this case is jailbreak prevention because we're talking iOS, we're not talking Android. Um, and uh, same thing over here. I can add um, uh, the native code. I'm obfuscating the native libraries as well as any non-native code, as well as a set of anti-fraud and anti-malware pro uh, pro uh, protections. So the anti-fraud pro uh, protections are going to be different in iOS because Android is a different operating system and has a different set of uh, potential mobile fraud risk. And so we, what you won't see here, for example, is um, blocking ADB, ADB, Android debug bridge. No, 
Android, obviously. Okay? Or in the malware prevention, um, you don't. You, what you won't see is you won't see block Magisk, because again, Magisk is a root hiding tool. Uh, but what you do see here is blocking jailbreak bypass tools, which is the equivalent there as well. Okay, so you have um, the the freedom on. Then that's what you should have. You have the freedom to build a security model that is required for your specific uh, business for your specific use case. OK, so as you see here, the build is complete. This was the build that we did here on Android. That build is complete. It took literally about a minute or so. OK, so what I would do next is um, you would go to the signing process. Why would you go to the signing process? Because an unsigned app is still an app cannot be installed. And so you would use the same um, signing credentials as you have used that to when you initially compiled the app. So use those same signing credentials, and then you would upload the app to the public app store. Um, for the purpose of this demo, I'm not going to sign at this moment, but I'm going to look at um, the certified secure certificate. Okay. So what we said in the beginning was that we were using the elite CISO security model. The elite CISO security model, uh, what we did was uh, it was uh, Encrypted the app, um, the data stored in the app and the code in the app, protected the app against jailbreak and root, provide, protected the app from, um, against network based attacks and metal mineral attacks, obfuscated the code of the app, added rest protections to the app, and then from a fraud prevention standpoint, added protections against overlay attacks um, as well as against keyloggers and added um, freedom protections to the app as well. Okay, so now this is what I was talking earlier you have this audit capability. So this certificate now provides you with the ability to provide an audit trail for your internal um, audit auditors and your inter, uh, making sure that you um, comply with your inter, internal require, requirements and regulations. But it also is now your security system of record and it, you can use that to demonstrate compliance with external uh, regulations as well. So if, any regulator would ask you, hey, are you, uh, how are you protecting your apps? Can you show us what's in your app from a protection standpoint? This is, as it turns out, our customers are using this certificate to have that conversation. Sorry, my phone just fell. Our, our uh, customers, as it turns out, are using this certificate to have this conversation with their regulators. Okay, so that is um, that last step. So. The last step to all of this is being able to have the proof that those protections are working in production. And for that, AppDome, other vendors have other solutions with AppDome within your same uh, tool that is completely integrated within your CI CD process. You have a mobile XDR solution. We call it ThreatScope. Um, our mobile XDR solution provides you proof of the protections that you currently have in the app, as well as gives you an idea of all of the other threats and attacks that may be leveled against your app. The green is good, okay? So I'm just gonna click on green for a second. Um, so as it turns out, our customers are using um, this mobile XDR solution to um, demonstrate internally when they report up to their management that the, um, the protections are indeed working, okay? So they use this as proof that the protections are working in production. They use this to justify the investment they made in their mobile app security solution uh, to their management to say, here, here's all the attacks. So um, what this shows you is that, for example, uh, in the last 30 days, there were 6,000 attempts to tamper with the app. Great, okay, we're doing that. Um, what they also are using a thread scope for is to, um, see if there's any threats and attacks against their app that they're currently not protected against. Okay, And in this case, as you can see, um, there's a whole set of threats and attacks. Again, this is strictly demo data. But for example, here it says uh, Android, debug bridge is, Android debug bridge is being used against the app. Okay, So now, that's now data that you have. So now you can go back and you can go into um, the system and you can version your security model. So I'm going to 
Now, rather than build a new security model, I'm just going to copy the security model and I'm going to call it Elite ISO version 2. And I've copied the existing security model. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to add block and or debug bridge to the security model. And again, from there, you build your app. Once you have the final security model you want, you can come in here um, and you can um, use AppDome and connect AppDome um, to your build system. And it's just a simple API call. And once you click build my app, um, the, the system will do that. And so after you do that, you go back in and then you get a new certified secure certificate. And this will say Elite CISO version two with um, the additional ad in here under the fraud prevention that you're protecting against ADB. So going back to what we were talking about, okay, the three steps that you need to be the ability to easily build protections in your app, the protections you need today, as well as the protections against the ever changing landscape that you may need tomorrow. Protections that are made out of mobile app security, anti fraud, anti malware, anti cheating protections. You need to be able to version your security model quickly. You need to be able to do that directly from inside of your CI CD pipeline. And you need to be able to provide proof internally that the protections are indeed in the app. So you can e easily uh, release the app to production in the release cycle, me uh, in the release meeting. And you have proof that the protections are working in production. That is how you build and how you make um, mobile app security agile, fast, and easy. Throjet, back to you. So, Yen. In the meanwhile, we had a couple of questions on the chat. So I thought uh, after the demo, you would like to answer it live, right? So uh, if you want, should I read it out for you? Uh, yeah, I'm looking at them as well. So yeah. uh, I see uh, uh, Basil's question. Will it yes. not add overhead on security team uh, whenever there is a new release normally with current solution? There is SDK which needs to be shared to a developer and it's one time. You're absolutely correct. Um, uh, Basil. So if you look at our customer, um, Union Digital Bank, and I'm not telling you what security model they have, I just gave you a demo, but I used their app. Um, but I can tell you that um, they only have one person who's part of a job it is to build a security model and make sure that the security model is in the app. Okay. So there is no overhead on the security team whatsoever. In fact, the only thing that the person needs to know is what security do I need to build into the app when I build the security model? So it doesn't need to even be a security engineer. It could be your most junior person on your security team could go in to the platform and just toggle on certain protections to achieve the outcome that you require. So yes, there is absolutely no, um, no overhead on the security team. And since this is done release by release, build by build, um, if there's a if there's new features in the app, if there's a new operating system that is being released, um, again, it's a very simple um, process. That's a simple API call. So none of the uh, the things that you experienced with SDKs before are going to be there. Okay. Um, how is mobile app pen testing or DAS covered? Um, Abdom is not a scanner. Abdom is not a pen testing solution. Abdom is a uh, a platform that allows you to build security into the app. So it's a very important question. As it turns out, here's what our customers are doing. Our customers will um, configure the right security model. They will then do a pen test against that security model to validate, yeah, hey, that's indeed the right security model and it works. And then all they need to do from that is to use the certified secure certificate and say, did we use the right security model that got pen tested three months ago, five months ago, whatever it is? Because it's a system that builds the protections. The system builds protections in the same way every time. So what you also get as a benefit of using a tool like AppDome is that you can reduce your dependency on pen tests or on DAST testing um, dramatically because you have the secure, certified secure certificate. So this is, as it turns out, during the release process, what our customers are doing. The dev team and the cyber team come together. The dev team asks, the cyber team asks the dev team, what security model would you use? Oh, we used uh, Elite CISO version two. 
great. Can you provide me with the certified security certificate? Yes, here it is. Okay, yeah, good. Um, uh, Cyber team then says I approved the the, the app to uh, for release to production because we are we have the uh, the certificate that ver verifies and validates that the right security model is in there. Um, performance issue scenes on the protected app. There are none. Um, the reason for that is that Abdom doesn't make any changes to the source code. Okay, Abdom doesn't make any changes to the source code. Most, more importantly, Abdom is not part of the data stream. It's not, it's, Abdom is not a hub. Once you download or through the API receive the uh, protected version of your app, Abdom gets out of the way. Okay, Abdom is not part of the data flow. Your customers will connect to your um, your backend servers in the same way that they connect today. From an encryption standpoint, this is maybe also where you're leading to. Hey, what about encryption? What about obfuscation? So um, our encryption um, algorithm uses um, many different encryption keys that are dynamically generated by the app, never stored inside of the app. As a result, um, only the data that the user needs when they when they're in the app needs to be encrypted and de-encrypted. And so from a performance standpoint, again, um, you, you see any uh, issues from a performance standpoint. Otherwise, again, banks like Citibank or um, Marriott would not be using Abdome for their millions of customers around the world. Okay. Um, where can I get the updated version after adding the security models? Great question. Um, the updated version would be specified within your um, certified secure certificate. Okay. So as you go in and you make changes, you know, adding here, prevent auto clickers to the security model. You would give that a new name. Um, you would version that so you can keep track of what whatever version is being used. But the proof in the pudding and the audit uh, certificate is here within the certified secure certificate. Okay, we go see if there's any other. These are very good questions. Thank you very much. So, uh, um, Jan, Basil had a couple of yes, questions sir. in the chat, but he's going to ask it live now. So, Basil, you can unmute yourself okay. and ask your questions. Okay, uh, so there are a few of the queries. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, as, as you mentioned, it goes as a library. So what are the chances that it can be bypassed? Because normally if we are uh, giving this control to the developer, yeah. the developer can remove those kind of libraries from the code. So how are we ensuring this code will be part of the app and it is not getting removed? Yeah, that's a very, 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 very good question. Basil, thank you. So as part of, um, it's part of every built on Abdome. Abdome adds our grass protections. We call it one shield to the app. Okay, that is something that is um, included in every build. It is part of the platform. It is not something that you can turn off. And part of that in here is that we are obfuscating the security protections that were built in there. So uh, there is no, if you would, and so we, we've, we've had, um, we've had, other scanning companies that would come in and say, well, I'm going to scan the, the protected app for any AppDome code. We can't find any AppDome code. So there is no place where anybody would be able to go in, identify the AppDome code, and then try to bypass, just like I explained what can be done with an SDK because the security controls for an SDK are in, uh, are in the clear. There is no AppDome code that is um, that can be found or identified or anywhere else through any fast or SaaS solution, and that then a develop, uh, or a malicious person would be able to go and turn off. So that is how we protect the security implementation that you build uh, to your app uh, using the AppDome platform. That's a very good question. Thank you. Oh, yeah, sorry, I'm just a uh, What is the methodology or the, the features which has been used by AppDome uh, so that you mentioned that uh, it is able to protect against the latest uh, generation of attack? So what are the uh, features or how exactly it keeps on updating from backend uh, to see that this app is not getting compromised? So um, I think what I've heard you ask is how does the the secure app protect itself from being modified, um, and and how do we know that the protections are uh, intact and, and and have not been changed? Is that correct? Uh, so uh, that is the only feature or I was thinking that in case if there is any uh, a malicious activity which is getting done on the app by the attacker once uh -huh, okay. he gained the access. So how, how exactly yeah. the app is getting protected with the latest uh, attacks because attackers are developing on day by day 
they're using new techniques. Correct. So how exactly yes. you guys are developing those things? And do we need to okay. make changes for that as well? Yeah, great question. So um, there is no way that you can do a over the air update of the security model. OK, and um, we believe that uh, allowing people to do an over the air update of a security model that by itself is insecure because that is a method that then could be used by a malicious entity to then insert a malware or inject uh, malicious code or anything else into the apps in production. So um, all the apps that are protected by AppDom, the protections are um, encapsulated inside of the app and the app is self-protecting, meaning that the moment somebody would try to um, reverse engineer the app, the app will, uh, will close. The moment somebody would try to tamper with the app, the app will close. The moment somebody would try to run the app against a debugger, the app will close. So all of your typical uh, protection models there as well. Now, you're asking the question, well, Jan, how do you know if somebody is using a canary version of Magisk that has recently been released and is attacking the app? Um, so AppDome does not use any threat signatures. There's also no threat server that needs to be, uh, that somebody needs to refer back to or that the app needs to connect to in order to get that. Okay, so while there are infinite way, number of attack vectors available, those attack vectors do not use an infinite number of tools. So if somebody is using a canary version of Magisk, th there's a very set number of ways that um, Magisk would try to, or even a, a new canary version of Magisk, would try to exploit vulnerabilities in the app. So what AppDome's protections do is um, they look for all of those typical ways that um, malware would try to um, attack the app. So um, the app dome protections know what the normal use would be that the user would do with an app. And if there's anything outside of that normal behavior, um, that would then in, be an indicative of a threat, the protections will identify that and will provide the user with a, a notification and that's the, the compromise notification that is over here. Uh, and that can be uh, like if we're looking at um, a disk, for example. Uh, where is it? Uh, the, sorry, the, I was talking about Magisk, no? I turn on block Magisk. And it says here that um, this is a standard compromise notification that um, the, the protections in the app detected that malware like Magisk or similar is being used, and therefore we will. Uh, shut down um, or exit the app, the app will close. This is the standard notification. You can fully customize that. You can write that in whichever language you want that as well. So, and you can even make sure that you can upload different um, JSON files to um, present that information in the language that was set by uh, the user, the device language that was set by the user. So it can be in Hindi, it can be um, in, in Tamil, it can be in English, it can be in whichever language that you would want that to be. Yeah, so that is how you would go about. Um, I can't, I'm not, I'm not an engineer, so I'm not going to go into much more detail. If Basil, you want more information on that, I will gladly set up a call with uh, you and, and, and somebody within our security research team, and they'll go into great, great detail how exactly AppDome protects against apps. Now, the second part of your question, and I answered that kind of already where it said, since there's no over the air updates available, how do you protect against zero day threats? Well, that is part of AppDom's um, total protection guarantee. Um, let's, let's assume that you are on a, a weekly release basis. Every time that you would come to the platform um, and you would click build my app and, and, by, and somebody has released a new routing tool and you have subscribed to um, our root prevention, you will automatically get protection against that new routing tool if uh, our security research team had identified that we weren't adequately protecting against that new routing tool. 99% of the cases we are already are protecting as a new routing tool because the routing tool uses a set, clear set of ways of trying to root a device and Abdo's protections will find that. But that is the, um, the way that we do that. But again, we'll gladly go into, in, in, uh, in, into more detail on that if that answers. If you still have questions after uh, what I just tried to. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, two more. One more is uh, like one. One of us like will it help in case of a fraud risk management detection? Because normally uh, these solutions, what we have seen, they create a user base lining, 
So how exactly Abdom does that? Uh, that is one. Another thing is whatever the logs are getting generated on Abdom, can that be sent to our uh, SOC solution? So the answer to that is yes. And uh, what I suggest is, Sirojit, if you can uh, type your email address in um, in the chat message um, and, and, and your phone number, that Basel, if you can follow up with Sirojit, and then we can schedule a specific meeting to, to talk about that. Because of course, the answer is much more than my simple yes. But I, I want to give the opportunity to other people to ask a question too, because we're almost at the top of the hour. Great. Maybe maybe we can take one more live question. So guys, if you want to ask any live question, please raise your hand. I will unmute you. Do we have Dr. Rajan in this session? I don't know. Because Dr. Rajan asks phenomenal questions every time. Uh, yeah, here you go. Great. Dr. Rajan, short question, please. Okay, because we have only five minutes left. Short question and short answer. Go ahead, please. And Dr. Dr. Rajan, we are not. To you? Yeah, he's not able to unmute, I believe. This happened last time also. Vikas, go ahead, ask your question. Uh, hi, Jan. Thanks for an excellent presentation. Uh, can I know what's the pricing model? How do you price this product? Yes, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, our pricing model is very straightforward. It actually um, provides you with pricing um, guarantee, budget, budget predictability. Um, so our pricing model is on a per app basis. Okay. Other uh, protection models will go in and will um, charge you based on the number of downloads that you have. And we consider that penalizing you for your success. So we do not penalize anybody for their um, their success and their growth. So our pricing model is on a per app basis and then based on the, on the set number of features that you require for your specific security model so that you don't have to uh, pay for anything that you don't need at this time. So that's in highlight what our security uh, pricing is. It is a SaaS based model, so it's an annual subscription. Uh, thanks. Uh, I had a follow up question, but I can take that uh, answer later on about how do you ensure for, let's say, an e commerce environment uh, the you know, false positives? Uh, for example, are you blocking genuine customers or not? Um, but I can take that separately. Maybe so you can send over um, some answer for that. Yep. Thank you. Perfect. Sounds good. One last question, maybe. Because I can rush my closing in two minutes. So we have practiced that. <laughs> No other question, I believe. So I hope you can see my screen and great. Thank you very much, uh, everyone, for joining in. Amazing session, Jan and Sorojit. Guys, if you want to download your participation certificate that looks like this, what you can do is you can go to Elite CISO's website, click on events, go to upcoming events, and click on CP certificate. Once you click on it, go ahead, uh, pay 118 rupees. This is the fee we charge for the uh, certificate because nothing nothing goes to Elite CISO, everything goes to a third party agency that manages these blockchain based certificates. And you can use these certificates as a CP certificate for your certifications like 